So this is question nine on page 120. Okay. Uh, two spheres collide obliquely. The mass of the first one is two. The mass of the second one is, sorry, the first one is four and the second one is two. The two kilogram is brought to rest by the impact. Now, if it's brought to rest, that means its velocity afterwards in both directions is zero. Okay. Uh, you're also told the coefficient of restitution is a half. And we have to show that before impact, the spheres are moving perpendicular to each other. Okay, so we'll fill in. All we know so far about this one is it must have been going at a velocity u beforehand. So we can label this, if we call that theta, that's u cosine theta, and that's u sine theta. Again, the velocity perpendicular to the line of centres does not change, so we know that that is u sine theta. This we will call x. The velocity doesn't change in the direction perpendicular to the line of centres, so if that ends up being zero, it must have been zero beforehand, okay? Because there is no change. We'll call that w. All right, now, principle of conservation of momentum. 4 times u, remember it only applies to the direction parallel to the line of centres. 4u cosine theta plus 2w, mass times velocity plus mass times velocity, is equal to mass times velocity afterwards. 4 times x plus 2 times 0, which is just 0. Divide by 2 and we will get 2x is equal to Four u cosine theta plus two w. That's one equation. Newton's experimental law. X minus zero is equal to minus e times u cosine theta minus w. That minus that equals minus e times that minus that. Multiply across by two. 2x is equal to minus 1 times u cosine theta minus w or 2x is equal to minus u cosine theta minus minus plus w. Okay. Oh, hang on, sorry. What did I do here? No, oh, that's right. Okay. Uh, Apologies, actually, no, I have a mistake here because I divided by 2, so that should be a 2, that should be 1w, and that should be 2, okay? Sorry, that was my mistake. I divided by 2 here before I put it up here. Okay, so now we have two equations. If we subtract the bottom one from the top, we will get 2u take away minus u, so that'll give me 3u cosine Theta, that take away that gives me zero, that take away that gives me zero is equal to zero. Okay? 3u cosine theta equals zero. Well, we know that u isn't zero because we know it's traveling at a particular velocity. So the only way that this will work is if cosine theta is zero. And that would only work if you look at the cosine from zero to 360. So the place where cosine theta is zero is if theta is, well, if that's 360, that's 180, 90 degrees. And you can check it by looking up the cosine inverse of zero anyway. Okay, so theta must be 90 degrees. Okay, so theta is 90 degrees. What does that mean? That basically means that if we draw our diagram, I'm going to rub this out now. If, sorry, if we look back now, if theta is 90 that means our u must actually be like this. Okay, that's the only way it'll work when the theta is 90. Okay, so that's our u. So effectively, that's zero. That now means we can put a u in here as well. All right, that's with theta equal to 90 degrees. Uh, so yes, we can see that this one is traveling at a velocity in that direction, and this one is traveling at a velocity in that. So before impact, the two spheres are indeed traveling perpendicular to each other. Um, 
show that the kinetic energy gained by the 4 kilogram is equal to half of that lost by the 2 kilogram. Okay, so in this situation then, uh, the kinetic energy gained will be a half m u squared, well actually, okay, let's think about it. If that's x, then this is going to be u squared plus x squared, the square root of, okay, by Pythagoras' rule. So the kinetic energy of this sphere is a half times its mass times its velocity squared. That gives you a half of 4 is 2, and the square root of a number squared is just the number itself. Okay? That's the kinetic energy afterwards. That's the kinetic energy afterwards. The kinetic energy beforehand is a half times 4 times its velocity squared. So its velocity is u in that situation. That's 2u squared. So the kinetic energy after, take away the kinetic energy before, is 2u squared plus 2x squared minus 2u squared. So it is 2x squared. Okay, that's the gain in kinetic energy for this one. 2x squared. Now, what about here? Okay, let's look actually first and look at our link here. What about w? We have an equation now. We've worked out that cosine theta is zero. So if we put that back into any one of these, we will get minus u times zero plus w is equal to 2x. So we can immediately see that w is 2x. Okay, so we can now replace this w with a 2x. Now, what is the kinetic energy after in this one? Its kinetic energy afterwards is zero, a half m zero squared. What about its kinetic energy before? Its kinetic energy before is a half times its mass times its velocity squared. A half times two is one, and 2x all squared is 2x multiplied by 2x, which is 4x squared. So the kinetic energy beforehand is 4x squared. The kinetic energy afterwards is 0. So this sphere loses 4x squared joules. This sphere gains half of that. That's what you were asked to prove. Okay.